it's a great pleasure for us to give a warm welcome to, to Jack Ma. Thank you. Hi. Um, it's my great honor. And uh, I was invited about months ago. And it's, I did not expect this. People say this is a very sensitive, sensitive time for me to talk because about a Yahoo, about Alibaba, about this and that. But I promise that I promise I come. Today, any questions you have, I will answer every question you have. All right, so uh, I've been here for 15 days, and I plan to spend one year here. And nobody knows, my company did not know that I'm going to spend a year here. I uh, guess people ask why you are here. Are you ready for getting Yahoo? No. Everybody was very sensitive when I said I'm going to spend one year there. And uh, I just come here, I'm tired. Too tired in the past 16 years. I started my business when I started 1994, found the internet, and I got crazy about the uh, internet and give up my job in the teaching. And like, I call myself like a blind man riding on the back of blind tigers, jumping around, still kicking and still surviving. And then uh, joined the government organization for 16 months and not successful, it started Alibaba in 1999. And we built up the Alibaba, we are lucky enough to have the Taobao, we have the Alipay, we have Ali Cloud Computing and uh, so many things. So after 12 years I say, I need some time to rest. Especially this year was so difficult for me. I did not expect, I, I prepared for 12 years was uh, in China called the Benminian. This is our 12 year for Alibaba. At the beginning of the year, we have the, the you know, moving for the Alibaba B2B CEO because of the uh, customer cheating things. And then we have the Alipay and, and about the VIE. I still don't know what the VIE is, right? And then uh, we have, uh, we have uh, the, uh, the Ali Taobao separated in, in four parts. So many things that really make me feel tight. And I said, well, why not give up one year? Because next year is my personal Birmingham, <laughs> which is, could be much more difficult. So this year was very tough and difficult. I believe next year is going to be tougher and more difficult and more complex. So I got ready for that. And I need, think I need a rest. So in order to for another three, four years hard working, because this three years is not my job. If something wrong, criticize this president of Taobao, CEO of Alibaba, and Alipay, it's their fault. Because three years, their fault. Three years later, something wrong, my fault. So I come here, and I would spend most of the time in the States, and then uh, thinking, relaxing, and yes, the two days ago, I picked up my golf and here, and uh, just relax. So nothing about the things people think about. So we are a very lucky company, and uh, there's no chance that we survived. Uh, I don't have any sort of uh, backgrounds, a rich father or strong uncles, so, and uh, <clears throat> I, I, I remember 1999, I came to Silicon Valley looking for venture capitalists. I talked to a lot of uh, venture capitalists, and I, I remember a few days when I drive by, by the Menlo Park, right? I, I, was, I was rejected by so many venture capitalists. When I talk about Alibaba startups, they look at me strange. What? Alibaba, what are they talking about? <laughs> but I, I, I went back to China with nothing, no money, nobody invested in me, but I full of confidence. I saw the American dreams. At that time, 1999, I walk on the high expressway, you know, the high expressway every evening full of cars and in the parks of the, of the companies, every Sunday weekends full of cars and people working day and night. And now this is something I believe is going to happen in China. Without getting any venture capitalist, but I think I went back to China with the American dreams. And we started the business there, and after 12 years, you know, 
lot of things happen. We, 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 we build up the B2B and nobody believed the B2B would work because the B2B at that time was good, but Ariba, I don't know, still there? Yeah, Ariba. Ariba.com, Broadvision, and Commerce One, you know, these are very famous B2B companies. People say, how can you do B2B in China? Because B2B in the USA, they focus on big companies. They focus on buyers. And we believe there's no big companies in China. And I don't see there are big companies in, in the short term that with China we have a lot of big companies. Because big companies only SOE. SOE, they do not need e-commerce. They need is government policy, right? So we focus on small business. We, become, we believe China, the small business, the private sectors are the future. So we focus on that. And the B2B in the US is focus on buyers. They want help the buyers to save the cost, to save the time. We believe don't teach the SME, don't teach the small business how to save the cost because they know much better than you do. You should help them how to make money. So we focus on helping small business. We focus on helping them to make money, to sell things abroad. Very difficult to do business at that time, but after 12 years, we got more than 58 million small business around the world using our services. That, that model is not very sexy. Compared to Tencent and Baidu, we did not make that much money like, like online gamings. But we can sleep well in the evening because the money we make, not online gamings. The money we make, they're helping small business to survive, to get business opportunities, which I feel very proud of that. And today, as always, I never feel proud of how much money we make. I feel proud how much impact we can help the others, especially small business. Before the history of internet, no company can help over 50 million SMEs. Today, we are trying. And I feel proud of that. This is the first company. And people say, Jack, if you make Alibaba successful, that means you, you are pulling a million tons of ship on the top of the Himalaya. <laughs> and I say, yes, we will carry that thing down. And we did. The second company is called the Taobao. And everybody say, oh my god, you're competing with eBay. I say, why not? China needs an e-commerce site. And building up the China market takes efforts, takes time, and takes great effort. You really want to build up something. So at that time, people say, there's no chance. Well, if you never try, you don't, how do you know there's no chance? So we tried. And I said, we, the, if, if eBay are the uh, sharks in the ocean, we are the crocodiles in the Yangtze River. <laughs> Never fight in the ocean, let's fight the Yangtze River. It was difficult. It's a lot of fun. And we survived. They got a 90% market share at that time. Today, for c 2 c business one, we are like a 90% market share. And lucky, just lucky. Um, there are a lot of things can be discussed in the future. Today, people always write about the successful stories about Alibaba. And I, and I really don't think we are so smart. We made so many mistakes. We were so stupid at that time. So I think someday the book I personally really want to write about, as I said, is Alibaba 1001 Mistakes. These are the things. <laughs> These are the things people should remember, people should learn. If you want to learn how the, people, the other people succeed, it's very difficult. There are a lot of lucky things out there. But if you want to learn, if you learn how people feel, you will benefit a lot. And I always like to read those books talking about how people feel. Because look, if you look into it, any company that feel, the reasons why they feel almost the same. And that really matters. So Taobao succeed, and then we have the Alipay, because everybody say, China, oh, no credit system, banking is terrible, logistics terrible, and how can you do e-commerce? 
I never tell, to, just like today, I come here not without a PPT, without my business. I, I'm not coming here to sell your business, sell my business, because I don't have stocks to sell to you guys. But I think because China is not a good at logistics, not good at credit system, not good at a banking system, that's why we need the entrepreneurship. That's why we go, we should go and build them up. So I believe if there's no, you build it up. Later, this become the standard of China. And I believe China needs that. I, I remember six years ago, I came to the States, I told the USA audience, say, I believe five years later, China will have more internet users than the USA. People say, no. I say, well, you have only 300 million population. China 1.3 billion, right? For you guys to have 400 million internet users without anybody dying, keep on having babies, you take 50 years. <laughs> we need five years. It's just the time issues, right? So let's wait and see. Today, we have more users. And today, people say, wow, your buying capability is low. Let's see about five years later. Five years later, today people buy, only spend 200 IMB per day, per month. Five years later, these guys will spend 2,000. And we have patience, we are young, you know, I'm old, but my people, only 26 average age. They are young, and let's wait for the future. So <clears throat> Alipay was just like a very, that time people say it's a stupid escrow services, right? John wants to buy things from Stephen. John does not want to buy the money, and Steve does not want to give the product. So we open an account to say, buy the money to us. If you're happy, we buy the money. Not happy, return products, return the money. People say, how stupid the model is. <laughs> well, we don't care whether stupid or not stupid. We care whether the customer wants it or not, whether really meet the need of the customers. It is stupid. But after seven years, we have more than 600 million users, registered users in China using that. So stupid things, if you improve it every day, it's going to be very smart. And we believe that. So today it is good and it's growing. And uh, it's like uh, PayPal, but we are bigger than PayPal right now on transaction wise. And the last and most important is Ali Cloud Computing. And uh, not like the other companies, they talk about Ali, uh, they talk about co cloud computing, they want to sell you the uh, hardware, software. We have nothing to sell you. We just want computing our own data. Because of the data we have from the uh, SMEs, because of the data we have the consumers from Taobao, data from Ali uh, Pay. So we, want, we believe in the future. The world is going to be the data processing world. How we can share the data with the others in a, in, a, in a great way, right? So that's the thing, that's the business about. Uh, it's not um, that good yet, but it is very profitable. The whole company looks healthy, so we are very appreciative. We are the company full of thanks. There's no chance we can win. Now we survive, I think. We always ask our own question, why are we still working so hard? I talked to my colleague one day, and he said, Jack, I never know that in my life I can do that much. Second, I never know that the things I'm doing are that meaningful to the society. And third, I never know that life is damn set hard. We work day and night. Even now, we work day and night. I get so thinner and strange. And, <laughs> I understand life is not easy. We feel proud because we are changing China. It's not how much money you make. When you see, I think, 10 years ago, when I walk on the street, people thank me because my Alibaba B2B helped them to get orders across the ocean. Today, when I walk on the street, the young people say, Jack, thank you very much. I op my wife and I opened a small shop on Taobao. We made, we made a surviving, we had a great income, and 
you know, this is meaningful thing. We make the credit means money. Years ago, if you have a great record, a credit, trust, but you're not, you not rich. Today, if you have a good record on Taobao, you get rich because people do business with those people with good rec record. We're teaching consumers to smart. People say, Jack, I bought something so cheap on Taobao. Is that a fake product? <laughs> yes, we do. Fake products are everywhere. But we spend most of the efforts in China. 50% of the people in Taobao, they're focusing on checking the intellectual property issues. But there's a bottle of wine that cost us only $9. The people buying the street is $300. Why is that? The channels, the advertisement, the TV shows. Why consumers should pay that much? So we cut that. And we make things changing. So tell the consumers, say, this T-shirt, you buy on Taobao, maybe $30 or $15. You buy on a shop, $150. Not because Taobao sell on cheaper, because that shop sell too expensive. <laughs> we should teach the consumers to be smart. And the third, very important, we saw so many factories in China, especially in Canton. They are not a company. They are not even a factory. They just OEM. They just sell things. They just manufacture. They don't know who are selling for them. And they don't know who are the customers. So anything come, they are in trouble. So we should tell the manufacturers, you have to contact the consumers yourself. You have to sell yourself, serve yourself. Then this is a real business. Otherwise, it's just a workshop. And we're changing that. And I feel proud. And we are honored. It's not about money. As we believe, when you have one million IMB or one million US dollars, you're a rich man. When you have 10 million US dollars, you're in trouble. You worry about inflation, uh, IMB, and you know, you start to invest, you get into trouble. When you have one billion, that's not your money. It's the society's trust. The, the shareholder, the people believe you can spend this money smarter than the government. You can spend the money than the others. So they give you the trust. How can you do this trust? How can you, you know, treat this trust well? And I think we are facing this challenge. And the product for Alibaba is not the people. It's, it's not, it's not the, the service. It's the people, the employees, the colleagues. The average age of the company is 26 years old. And we are facing so many challenges, guys. I never realized that one of the uh, key government officers of uh, another country visited me and said, Jack, oh my god, you have uh, 300 million users on Taobao, and you know, you're, you, the population is much bigger than my country. <laughs> I said, yeah, it is difficult. Any policy we're making, we get into big trouble. Because people say, this is pretty good. If some people complain, it's just like a government policy making. And those people who are making policies, their average age is 26. We have never met these kind of things. If we change, you know, like a search engine. The normal search engine, you pay, who pays better, who licks on the top? We believe we should put the trust record, the credit record on that. And then we put that, a lot of people say we will demonstrate. 200 people last year came to our company, demonstrate, say, Jack, you changed the policy, you got to pay, you know. But I say, if it is right, let's do it. And this is the world we're changing. And now, today, what, what we need is not pure programs, not service people, a product manager. What we need is so sociologists, e economists, and those guys who make the principle and the policies. So we're facing a lot of ch challenge, challenges, but we feel proud because I believe in the 21st century, if you want to be a successful company, you have to learn how to solve a problem of the society instead of catching one or two opportunities. It is so easy to catch opportunities. And it, 
I'm not bragging. I think today, after, after 12 years jumping around, I find that making money is very simple. But making sustainable money and responsible to the society, improve the world, meanwhile making a lot of money is very difficult. And this is what we are trying. And we think China, because of internet, is improving. And three years later, I'm preparing for that. Today, people say, ah, oh, China stock, internet stock going down, that because of the VIE, because of what and this. No. I think, look at the US economy. This is, they're facing big challenges. Europe probably go nowhere, <laughs> right? <laughs> China, anything that happens today in the US and Europe is going to happen in China three years later. China is going to face a big challenge in three, four years later. And if you know something bad is coming, get ready for it instead of screaming now, instead of complaining. And as internet companies, we have to take responsibility. And my job, I'm not a politician. I'm not speak for government. I'm speak for myself, for our own business, speak for my customers. 50 million SMEs and 8 million Taobao power sellers, how they should survive three years later. This is something I want to come here in the States, learn how Obama say, I'm going to create jobs, how he did that. Any mistake, we should learn from it, and three years later, let's solve in our way. This is why I'm here. So I think you all have a lot of questions, and I'm ready to answer any questions you have, because I don't know what, what to talk about later, because I'm just here. It's just a free talk, right? <laughs> Thank you very much. Any questions you have? Other side. Thanks. Well, Mr. Ma, you brought it up first, so I'm going to make you answer your own questions and be honest about it. Are you going to buy Yahoo? <laughs> Good question. Yes, we are very interested in that. We are very interested in Yahoo because our asset, Alibaba Group, is so important to Yahoo. And Yahoo assets also very very important to us, to the internet users, and to the industries. So yeah, we are interested in, and also all the P's and all the serious buyers, they already talk to us, and they, sh they, 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 they should talk to us more. Have you made the initial approach to them? Pardon? about? Have you made the initial approach to them about buying them? I just assure you that we are very interested in right now. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Jack. Uh, actually, I'm not going to ask that tough question. Uh, no. I, I was actually encouraged by Joe this morning, and uh, he said that uh, anything about uh, the uh, uh, cinema mode and uh, 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 I, VIE mode, uh, yeah. just ask Jack, and he'll be the right person to answer all, answer all those questions. And, uh, okay, seriously, uh, this is a question that I know that PRC government has adopted uh, the uh, um, um, national security uh, review system against the, the MNA merge and uh, acquire the uh, PRC company by the foreign, um, com by foreign companies. So um, my question is, how do you view the impact uh, of the uh, um, uh, scrutiny by the PRC government? And uh, specifically, do you think that's going to adversely impact for the uh, uh, PRC company go offshore IPO, like you know, get finance from, from, from abroad? OK. So yeah. that's my question. Yeah. Probably, I'm sorry for those. Uh, I, was, I will answer this question in Chinese, which probably more specific. Any English translation, probably, you know, people can help. Because so many talk, people talk about a VIE. I'm got confused. I spend a lot of time these days understand what the hell is that. <laughs> OK, in English, right? I just be fair, right, so English. First, <clears throat> VIE is a great inno innovation. And I believe it's a great innovation 10 years ago, seeing a model. 
It's a great. It helped China grow on the internet and all the other high tech industries, which we, Alibaba, also benefit a lot. And I don't see the government is going to take that thing down. I never feel that. And I don't know why people worry so much about that. But some sensitive areas, some industry, some sectors, like finance, like, I don't know, what else? These things, the government have concerns about the VI structure, which I understand that we should support. For example, if anybody want to get a bank, banking license in China, like a 20, 25% foreign capital own. If you want to cross that, any nation will against it. So VI structure, I did not see any government say, well, I'm going to shut that thing down. What worry about? We should put this thing on the, on the a uh, few days ago, I read an article about Xiao Gangchun, right? You know? So Xiao Gangchun, the Gaige is very good. But Xiao Gangchun, the Gaige, no one has a certain Xiao the people are still in pain and still in the dark. We got to make this VIE really legal, transparent. This is the power of internet. Making sure if it is good after 10 years testing, it is good, why not open? If any tiny sensitive area that if you're not comfortable, join us, discuss about that. So I, I don't know, people say, well, something wrong with the Alipay. Oh, I'm honored, right? Because of that, we open VIE. Because tell the truth, when government, the PBOC, the Ming Hang Suo, how many, where do you, Alipay has uh, foreign capital? I have to tell the truth, guys. Do you agree? If the government say, do you have foreign capital? I say, no, but I have. This, this won't work, because we are getting bigger, right? Just like today, if I come to say, I want to buy, uh, I want to buy the uh, PayPal, do you think the US does not have any proof? Oh, they will, even with Yahoo, right? So we have to be fair. It's not that big issue. It's just, a, it's just a, let's face it, open it, discuss it. And I don't see the government is going to shut that down. All right? I hope I answered your question. Now. Yeah. Hi, Jack. I think we haven't been seeing each other for more than 10 years. Oh, but yeah. you look ter uh, terrific today, so I'm very Thank happy. You. <laughs> I believe you went through a lot of difficult things in the past 10 years. So you also mentioned about you, one day you will write a book. So my question is, would you like to share just one thing with us first? And you would do differently, uh, differently uh, you know, for something, one thing. Okay. Yeah, okay. All right. Thank you, Michelle. Right, Michelle Tan? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> we, uh, we know not, not see for 10 years. Um, yeah, we've gone through a lot of uh, tough days. If uh, today, when something is smooth, I just feel uncomfortable. <laughs> that's, that's true. Uh, in the US, it's called a very paranoid. I am, yeah. But uh, the mistake we made a lot for Yahoo China. I think when we acquired Yahoo China, if if people ask me whether we will do it again, yes, I will. But whether we will do it in this way, no, I won't. We will do a much better, smart way because we had no any experience of acquisition, especially acquire an internet company. And we made a lot of mistakes there. And that helped us today. So. When you ask me about whether I'm interested in Yahoo, yes, of course. I think we are probably one of the very few companies really understand Yahoo USA very well because of that. And people say, well, Yahoo China is terrible. How could you still talk about that? I mean, ch terrible running. No, it's not terrible running. We saw problems four years ago. So we cut Yahoo China. If we did not, 
we would have died today. So we would share these mistakes, how we acquire, how we treat the culture things, how we fight people. We should fight some people earlier. We should keep some people. You know, there's a lot of detailed things. I believe any companies in the, church, in the future will learn. And, and I think today I'm not talking about Yahoo USA, but we think about how the internet companies in the USA and China should learn from Yahoo. We will all face the same challenge if we do not learn the mistakes the other people make. So that's, that's I think, I want to share with the mistakes. Thank you. Thank sure. you. Hi, Jack. Um, I had three quick questions. The first is, um, Taobao has been incredibly successful. How do you manage and prevent it from being the victim of its own success? How do you stay nimble? You know, eBay itself has sort of stagnated as it got this large. Second is, given the competitive landscape with companies like 360 Buy, will you be forced to do more on the logistics side, take title? Will you be forced to what? To, uh, forced to build out your own logistics, take title, and therefore will that change your model? And last is, I've read a lot of things about your account of what went on with Alipay. It'd be interesting to hear it. If you could do, do it over again, what would you have hoped Masa and Jerry would have said to you? How would you have wished that dialogue would have gone as opposed to the way it went, uh, it actually went? Okay. The first, the Taobao, yeah, Taobao grows so fast and will grow even faster in the future. The big challenge is that we have never run such a huge company. And I, I don't believe the internet time there's empire thinking. I hate the empire. Empire thinking means join me or I kill you. And I don't like the model. I believe the ecosystem. I'm, I'm, I'm the board member for TNC, the, the Nature Conservancy. I believe the, the everybody should be connected to each other, helping each other. It's an ecosystem. So Taobao becomes so big so fast. And I worry about that. I should give the industry some opportunity, give the competitors some opportunities. So in June, we separate Taobao into four paths. Because people tell, talk to me, say, Jack, you've been there for nine years. We, it's very difficult to compete with you because you're already so big. So OK, I make it smaller, you compete. <laughs> if 10 years later, I'm still bigger than that, I will put another three pieces each making sure we run big company like a small company, giving the people, the, 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 the young people, opportunities to run the business because it's their business. Talk about like Facebook, like Google, like Tencent. They are not Chinese companies. They do not belong China. They do not belong US. They belong this time, 21st century. You have to use in a different way to run this company. Honestly, say, what is the best methodology? What is the best mental thinking to run that company? I don't know. We are testing, and we are ready to take mistakes. So we believe the ecosystem. We do not believe the empire thinking. So that's why we are testing every way we could. And second question is that the, leaving the competition 360 Buy, yeah. Will, yeah. Will uh, you well, we will to change take our title, model. Right, change your model. I think they should change their model. <laughs> it's not about. It's not about. I I don't feel anything wrong with Taobao model. We are we are growing. We are we could we can make money very easily, and uh, we can we can support more people. So I don't know. We should change our model, and I don't buy this story about uh, buying things and uh, selling online. This is. This is really stupid model on the internet, and I don't like that. And logistic things, I tell you, last year, the total China package delivered on the street is 2.1 billion packages delivered. Taobao created nearly 1.1 billion. And this year, we will probably create 3 billion packages delivered on the street. That we do not want to have our own logistic system. China probably needs 10 million people delivering on the street. How can we run a company with 10 million employees? <laughs> right, 20,000 people today we have. We have 23,000 people. It's already a big headache to me. So 10 million 
Crazy, nobody can do that. So we should support the logistic companies to serve well, to deliver well, to treat their employees well and the customer well. This is what we want to do. Not, we, we do not want to have our own logistic companies, never ever. So we have the money, we have the inference, we have the orders, how we can improve the society. This is, and to Alipay, Masa, and Jerry, I think I have uh, answered that many times, but I can answer you again. They are good friends, they're good partners. And uh, I understand at the beginning, say, Jack, you know, how could you, that, even today, the VI is still quarrel about that. But I got clear message, you see, yes and no. So I told them, I think today they are happy. Now I'm not happy because I'm getting such a big burden for Alipay because today Alipay grow very fast, but it is not a big, nice model yet. You cannot make money out of it. But we are supposed to pay that much money at the end to the company. And I say, challenge is a challenge. Young guys, let's create a good model for that. So I think it's a very healthy discussion between Jerry, Masa, and us. But unfortunately, the rumor was out that I moved the company out without the board a meeting, without notice. I tell the truth. They know. And we discuss together. And today, the problem solved. They are happy. I'm half burnt. <laughs> but it's a challenge. Michelle, I'm facing a lot of you know, tough days. This is one of the tough things I have to face. Because it's easy for other guys to say, well, you should do this, you should do that. When you know if Ali Pei die, Taobao die. If Taobao die, 8 million power sellers in trouble. And I cannot do that. And if I do not follow China law, I will drink a coffee in Beijing every week. <laughs> Everybody wanted me to sit in there and drinking coffee, and they say, Jack, where you get a bigger, you're in trouble. Be transparent. Today, 21st century, everything should be transparent. Otherwise, why we should work so hard for? So that's that's what I'm telling. I think there's no other way where I can zig around. I just to say this is the reality. We have to face it. I hope I answer your question. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thanks, thanks very much for a wonderful speech. My question is how Taobao evaluate international collaborations in technology. Because I heard Taobao now is still not open API for foreign countries, I mean non-Chinese countries. So that means non-Chinese countries are not able to launch their products based on Taobao platform. So I want to hear your opinion about this. Thanks. OK, I'd love to. We'd love to open the API for the non-Chinese country. Unfortunately, it's about the payment. It's very difficult. I, I have, you know, when I travel around, I saw so, so many overseas Chinese, they say, oh, Taobao is wonderful. How can we buy things outside China, sell things, and a lot of uh, foreign. We are trying our best, and uh, we think that if the payment pro is solved, things could be moved much faster. And uh, Taobao will never stay alone in China. I said Taobao does not belong to China. It comes from China. It belongs to the whole world. It belongs to this generation. Let's make sure in the future it can help more people because things really cool on Taobao. Thank you. Thanks so much. Yeah. Hi, Jack. Uh, actually, my question is kind of similar with hers, but... Uh, you want to buy things from here to <laughs> from Taobao? No, but <laughs> <laughs> of course I want to, right? It's so cheap, and uh, thank you, Taobao, uh, improve my life. Okay, so uh, my question is that you have said that there is no difficult uh, business in the world, but the truth is for a lot of foreign companies, it's really difficult to do business in China. And uh, we have a lot of clients, they want to go to China, and uh, actually, luckily, Taobao uh, Ali Group can provide the whole solution for them, actually from the high China, from Alipay, from everything. But it's hard for them to know there, there is a choice. And uh, it's hard for them to kind of cross the policy part or government part. So 
What's your, um, do you have any plan to help those foreign companies? Because Chinese still <coughs> has a, a needs for the foreign products. Okay, thank you very much. I think doing business is difficult in anywhere in the world. Foreign companies go to China, find the problems, and I think, and I believe, Chinese companies come to the U.S. doing business also facing big problems. I don't see any very successful Chinese companies in USA. I mean, you know, that we come here in the USA. Is there any famous Chinese companies that come to USA or European that is very good? Huawei. Who? Alibaba. <laughs> Alibaba. <laughs> not yet, not yet, right. Lenovo? Lenovo. Oh. Do you call that successful? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. <laughs> My my thinking was that uh, in China, we do have some successful foreign companies, right? Microsoft is not bad. IBM is not bad. And we have a lot of Oracle, a lot of great companies, and the foreign company in China, very successful. Guys, going anywhere, doing business, takes time. I think my friend Kara Fisher you know, asked me about question in the D conference. No market welcomes gamblers. You go there, create value for local people, have time, it will have chance. So I believe that doing business today in everywhere in the world is difficult. China's, my wife and I was debating yesterday morning when I was driving, saying, she think, oh no, it's so difficult to do business in the USA because they have a Walmart chain, whatever chain, everything's a chain, even the even the coffee is a chain. He said, how can you have a small business? And I said, well, in the USA, it's easy for a small business to do. To. So there's a professor sitting next to us. We should have a big debate. Which country is easier to do business, USA or China? And I think China today, if you still think about we should follow the government policy, you know, the negotiation or Forget it. I've said again and again 12, in the past 12 years, every time I speak out of China, if you meet somebody, come to you see, I have a strong guanxi with that mayor. Forget about this guy. <laughs> the only guanxi is the guanxi with the customer. If the customer love you, the government will better love you. Trust me, they need the tax. <laughs> need the jobs. <laughs> but if you want to pick around, you know, you're in trouble. So I don't, I don't believe that because my relationship with the government in the past 12 years, as I was in love with them, don't marry them, <laughs> always. I love them. Every time they come, I tell them the truth. I do everything they tell me. Yeah, OK, right, let's communicate. But do business, sorry. My friend does business with government, not me. In this way, you get respect from them. If this is that serious about Alipay, let's listen to them because the law is not government of Guanxi. So I give you advice. It's always scared, looking far away. Oh my God, this is a difficult place. Go there, test. Jump into it. You never learn swim until you're in the water. China is not that bad. But, <laughs> but, People ask me why China has no, no apple. USA have capitalism for more than 200 years, right? That thick fertilizers. People company die, grow, die, grow, that thick fertilizer. China, only 30 years after reform Deng Xiaoping. 30 years have a company like Tencent, Baidu, Alibaba, Sina, not bad. Right? So let's wait for another six, 30 years. We will have them. And that is not China. That belongs to the world because it belongs to the internet at the time. It belongs to the young people who were born 1990s and 1980s, year 2000. These are the people going to change the world, and especially most of the students here. And they are the future. I, I believe that. Thank you. I used the 
I used to work at uh, eBay and PayPal. I know how much challenge you have. Back to 2000, uh, I don't know, do you remember? Um, you have the TV advertisement in Australia. That is two months before uh, Sydney Olympic. I have a business trip there. So at that time, Alibaba just uh, have uh, two years old. So you have the ambition to have a uh, globalization at that time. So now, after 10, 12 years, right? Uh, Alibaba has the more power to have a globalization. What is your future plan for the global uh, growing strategy? And uh, uh, I think that's it. OK, thank you. Yeah, um, <laughs> you're right. When we have money, we start to make mistakes. When we have money, we have a beautiful office. We hire people with MBA, MBA degree. We hire people with the uh, VP of multinational companies. And, and when we have a little bit of money, only have five minutes, we start to think about globalization. Jesus. And then we said, let's back to basic, B2C, back to China. Year 2002. <laughs> I remember we called that time called a B2C, back to China, back to basic, back to base, right? Back to central of China, the coast area, back to coast area. Because we, we told ourselves global vision, local win. No matter how wonderful you think, you have to step on the ground and do the things, the hard work every day. So, so many years passed, 12 years passed. We still believe global vision, local win. But we, start, we tested Japan, we tested Indian, we tested European, and we tested also in for past 12 years, we never shut down the US office. I'm now coming out for one year. I want to learn one thing. And I want to ask this thing to everyone here, sure. Fortune 500 CEOs in the world, they all believe China is a big, interesting mar market. But nobody really give up things and come to China to spend one year there. Because if you really want to know China, you got to spend some time, and me too. And I'm asking USA, European is going to be a big market for us. And I just want to put down everything, spend time in USA for one year, get feeling how we can help the USA SME, how we can help the US. What's the difference we can do between Amazon, eBay, and us? What's the real value we can create? When you think about that clearly, let's start to do it. Because we, cannot, we never should finish a 20-year program in two years. Life is short, but life is long. You cannot say, I want to finish that in two years. We have time. I'm that old, but I'm still young. I, I have time. Yeah. So we will go step by step, not asking about how much revenue we can bring out of China. We will ask what value we really can bring to local people. And we have already more than 15 million small business outside China using our services. And we do not charge them. And freedom free is always the best. We will, we will work on that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Jack. Um, I, I just welcomed Jack to the U.S. and said I hope he can have a good rest while he's here. Um, so my question for you is, what do you think is the biggest misunderstanding that America has about China? And conversely, what do you think is the big biggest misunderstanding that China has about America? Honestly, I don't know that question. I think there are a lot of misunderstanding, but um, I was thinking about a few days ago, writing something on my Weibo. Everybody believed that I know the world. I know China cons in completely inside out. No, you don't. Deng Xiaoping did not know. Mao Zedong did not know. Nobody knows China. And everybody say, I know USA inside out. No, you don't know. Obama does not know. Otherwise, he would turn USA out. George Bush did not know. It's very difficult to know the outside, but you know yourself. What do you need? What do you want? What will you give up? 
If I know myself better, I can change myself to meet the outside. There's always misunderstanding between China and U.S. just like there's always misunderstanding between Henan people and Chinese. <laughs> right? Our job is not to solve the misunderstanding. Our job is to change ourselves to suit the others. So I don't know. But if that's why this is it's a good question. I come in here because I see so many American company people think point to China and they have never been to China. A lot of Chinese people could criticize US, they've never been to the States. So if we do not learn to appreciate each other, to look at the each other, and the more I spend the States, the more I love USA. And the more I come to China, I say, well, you know, it's, it's, it's communication. It's, so political-wise, it's, political, it's very difficult. But there's only one thing that I think I would be very happy to do, business. I don't like online gaming. I think, I believe the best gaming on the world is to make money. <laughs> Helping small business cross the ocean, doing business, make them understand each other. My grandfather no news by reading newspaper. My father no news by listening to the radio. Our generation know the world by watching TV. Our kids know the world by the internet. They say, I want to involve. And I believe this is the time. Let's build up the internet. Anything happened in the USA, we know in China immediately. Anything happened in China, most of the things you know very quickly. <laughs> well. Let's don't laugh. Let's appreciate most of the things. Let's appreciate that. Doing things step by step is important instead of get everything one night. Thank you. Okay. Last one. Yeah, sorry. Jack, you, you mentioned uh, that you spent some time here in the early days of Alibaba and that you were rejected by a lot of venture capitalists who you met with. But there, there was one investor here in Silicon Valley who played a big role in Alibaba's success, which was Jerry Yang and Yahoo, who invested, I believe, a billion dollars into Alibaba in 2005. Can you talk about your relationship with Jerry, how that investment came about, and what your relationship was like with him now, and how integral that investment has been to Alibaba's growth and success? OK, uh, first, Jerry is a very good friend of mine, personal friend. Lifetime, lifetime friend. We are families, also are good friends. And uh, but it's nothing personal. It's all about business, right? Yahoo is invested us year two thousand five. I think it benefited both sides. Uh, without Yahoo, U.S.'s investment, we would not be that successful today. Because we need the. We not need the cash to solve our problem. We need that cash to solve the venture capital problem. They did not see Alibaba has a future. They want to cash out. So they helped us that, not on the business side, mainly. <clears throat> and without Yahoo deal, we would never learn how to partner with a big company. What's the big company's problem? How we can improve our own culture and things. But in the future, if with today's situation we do not change, we will not have a bright future. We have to do something. So I think fairly speaking, we appreciate yesterday, but we are looking for a better tomorrow. Every company should do that. And uh, today and Jerry and you know, we're still pretty close friends and uh, we talk, we chat, we play golf maybe. In the future, the same. And we like, we like Yahoo. I think this is, Yahoo is the company, at least one of the three companies that awaked, waked me up about the internet. And I appreciate that all my life. Without internet, there will be no Jack Ma. And there will be no Alibaba Taobao. So that's what I, my answer is. Thank you very much. We have time.
I think I think Cara has a question from yeah. All Things D. So it's, your, it's your friend, Kara Swisher. Yes. <laughs> How you doing? So two quick questions. So you talked about you're interested in buying Yahoo. One, have you visited Yahoo on this trip? And two, how are you going to buy Yahoo? <laughs> no, I'm interested uh, in buying I, Yahoo, but it's I not happening. I answer my question in a very honest way. First well, question, so. no. Okay. I've been here for 15 days. Yeah. And most of the time, sleeping and reading. Okay. No, no, I don't have time to. <laughs> I think sleeping is more important now than because there's going to be a tough, long way to go. Okay. Second, your question is about uh, how? how. We are interested in getting the whole. The whole. Yeah. The whole piece. The whole piece yeah. of your of your Yahoo China stake, or the whole piece of all of Yahoo. Whole piece of Yahoo. <laughs> Yahoo China is already our ours, right? right? It's already in my pocket. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I gotta. The only thing I got to say is thank you in all this confusion for the first crystal clear answer about Yahoo, about the company. I appreciate it as a reporter. Yeah. So when's that going to happen? <laughs> I don't know. Honestly, I don't know because it's, it's more complicated than we thought. Mm -hmm. And there are so many people interested in that. And um, we are also talking to them and they are talking to us. And um, we think that it's it's it's... I was told it's so difficult. It's not about money issues. It's, it's about political issue, inside the sort of sport, you know. So I cross my finger just to say we are very, very interested in that. Okay, terrific. Thanks, Jack. Thank you.